We're going to dive in with my number one, which is offensive tackle Peter Skaronsky out of Northwestern. He's a four-star prospect. Uh, he was actually the third-ranked center prospect in the country when he committed to Northwestern. And he never played center. He took over for Rashawn Slater as a true freshman when Slater opted out in 2020, and he started at left tackle for three years. And so he committed as a center, never played the position. And now he enters the NFL draft as a left tackle. Uh, he's 6'4", 315 pounds. He's just under 22 years old. Uh, as far as stats, there's not a lot of stats for offensive linemen, but per PFF, he had a 93 pass blocking grade in 2022, which was first among offensive tackles. He had a 1.3% pressure rate allowed, which ranked second amongst offensive tackles. So what is he good at? Uh, I think Skaronsky is a top tier pass protector. He's so good and so smooth in pass protection. Uh, he, he's got great balance. He's got a really smooth kick step into his stance. He's got really quick feet, probably the best in class as far as his sets go. Uh, he, he's very high awareness player, as you would expect from a guy that was previously a center, uh, very aware of stunts and blitzers and how to pass those guys off. Uh, I thought he was good in the run game. He's got the athleticism to pull and to climb up to the second level and He's got no problem tagging defensive backs and linebackers. I look at him and I see a highly polished left tackle who could potentially play all five positions on the offensive line. Right, so let's talk so, about your number one, Mark, which is offensive tackle Paris Johnson out of Ohio State. I'll give you the floor and let you lead us off on him. Yeah, 6'6", 310 guy. Uh, his PFF grade in 2022 was an 83. He was a five-star prospect coming out of high school, number one ranked offensive tackle in his class and the number nine player overall. Uh, played right guard, then right tackle. Then he played left tackle in 2022. So he's played a little bit all over the line. He only allowed one sack this season, zero last year. Uh, really good run blocker, kind of has it all. Um, he can mirror, he can protect on a speed or a bull rush, can lead out on a screen, good on the second level. Really good balance and flexibility to go with such a huge frame. You don't usually tend to think of flexibility and balance when it comes to a guy who's 6'6", 300 plus, but I think you can say that he has that. He gets off the line so fast and gets in and out of his stance so fast that the only guy I can think of when I watch him and, I, you know, Eagles fans don't get too upset with me is there's there's a little poor man's Lane Johnson to, to Paris Johnson. Uh, and it's not just he doesn't he doesn't just share a last name. Uh, he, he had a play I tweeted out against Northwestern that reminded me of Michael Orr from the blind side when he runs the guy to the bus. Like <laughs> he just ran him to the sideline, ran him like 10 yards deep into the sideline. He, as opposed to Skaronsky, has a little bit more of that edge, a little bit more of that nastiness. And he's played in some more big games against some more stiff competition in terms of edge rushers. So, And he stood up in those games. We'll get to number three here, which is a guy that we all have at number three. Uh, it is Broderick Jones, offensive tackle out of Georgia. Dives, I'm going to let you lead us off on this one. Uh, one of the <laughs> We just talk about measurables. And that's going to continue here at number three with Broderick Jones, just one of the most toolsy prospects in this entire draft, man. Uh, he was a five-star recruit out of high school, six foot four, 315 pounds, has a great combination of just natural leverage, proportional length, man. This dude is absolutely explosive in space, strong at the point, a relentless finisher, man. He allowed just 16 pressures on 594 pass blocking snaps at, snaps at Georgia. Uh, he can still take some time to develop uh, with his pass protection, man. And he's... Uh, struggles a little bit regaining leverage off blocks but like you look at the measurables just like you saw with paris johnson man this guy this guy's frame he, he's just so stout he's he's so built his lower half is just massive uh and i think this guy has one of the biggest upsides in the entire draft especially in that like mid first round range uh i love this guy's ceiling um i'm gonna look at my uh big board real quick i have him number 14 uh, in my on my big board, he is very raw. Uh, Broderick Jones is definitely very raw. He he um, only played 203 true pass sets in college, so that's worth noting. Uh, but Broderick Jones, man, there's a lot to like. Yeah, and just point of clarification there. Uh, so the 203 true pass sets. True pass set is 
essentially a pass blocking rep without play action or an RPO or a screen. So it's just straight drop back passing. Um, he, he's very limited in that only 19 collegiate starts. So there is rawness in his technique. Mark and I both have the same guy. It's offensive guard Osiris Torrance out of Florida. Uh, Dibes has a different guy we'll talk about in a minute, but I'm going to lead us <laughs> off on Torrance. Uh, he was a three-star prospect who committed to Louisiana Lafayette, and he played three seasons there, 36 starts, before he transferred to Florida for his final season. And at Florida, in that one season, he was a first-team All-American at right guard. Uh, he's 6'5", 347 pounds. He's huge, a uh, little over 23 years old. Uh, as far as stats go, he only allowed 12, 12 pressures in his first two seasons in college. And, of course, it was Louisiana Lafayette, but making the leap to the SEC, it wasn't an issue. Uh, he gave up zero sacks or hits. He posted an 89.9 PFF run blocking grade in 2022. I look at his strengths. This guy is a stone wall in pass protection. Y you don't drive him off the ball. He does a great job, but getting the defender getting into the defender's chest and then keeping them at bay and when he is driven off that spot he does a great job of re-anchoring he doesn't walk backwards he's really good at sinking his hips dropping that anchor and stonewalling those blitzes i thought he had a really high iq really aware of loopers and blitzers and was able to pass those guys off well uh, he's quick off the ball in the run game and he's got for a guy this big 350 pounds he's got the ability to reach block on outside runs which Eagles fans will be familiar with like Jason Kelsey doing that a lot where maybe the run's going to the right and the guy is lined up on Kelsey's right shoulder and at the snap he jumps all the way across the guy's face and seals him out. And, and it's a really important way that basically teams can steal an extra run blocker to the play side. And Osiris Torrance at 350 pounds, he's able to do that, which is just huge. Let's get into dives number four. It is John Michael Schmitz uh, <laughs> out of Minnesota. I have been hearing about John Michael Schmitz in the group chats with dives for months now. <laughs> dives, tell me why you're so infatuated with this guy. Oh, John Michael Schmitz, man. Uh, he is a six year senior prospect, tons of experience, elite football IQ, elite, elite technique. Uh, unlike Osiris Torrance, incredible mobility, uh, ability to pull, get into that second level, good upper body strength, man. I think this guy's going to do really well at the combine. He needs to develop his lower body strength, um, and he doesn't have the elite physical tools of some guys we just mentioned at the top uh, of these rankings, but uh, he makes up for it by doing all the little things, man. Uh, John Michael Schmitz, man, was terrific during the Senior Bowl. Uh, he has... Uh, he played during the Senior Bowl at all three positions on the interior. Uh, and, you know, that was kind of the big question mark. Can he, does he have the versatility uh, to kick it to guard? And my God, he just looked two steps ahead of everybody he matched up against uh, throughout practices at the Senior Bowl. Um, so, yeah, uh, great size, six foot four, 320 pounds. Uh, I think this is a plug and play dude uh, that can really uh, just, be a, a core member of any team in the NFL for the next 10 years. Yeah. So he started 36 games at center for Minnesota. He was a first team all American in 2022, also second team academic all American. So he's a high IQ guy. Uh, and, and I think you see that on the field. I thought he senses pressure adjusts protections. Well, he was the highest graded center uh, by PFF this season. Uh, I, I will say he, He's good at he was good at doing like reach blocks. I did think you mentioned the limited athleticism at times. I think he would struggle in like a wide zone scheme. If you can get him in an inside zone scheme, but I don't think you want him in a wide and outside zone scheme. I think that would stretch his athleticism too much. So I do think he's scheme limited, uh, but I think he's a good center prospect for a team that does not run that sort of a scheme. Uh, Mark, I'm going to let you lead us off with Jones and then we'll circle back to dives. Yeah, my number five offensive tackle is Dewan Jones out of Ohio State. And how could you not be excited about a guy who's 6'8", 360? The last two years, 82.1 PFF grade in 2022, 86.5 in 2021. He, he gave up zero sacks this year, three sacks last year, only 12 pressures and one QB hit in the last two years. He allowed the best pressure rate in college football at 1.3% last year. 
it's tough to bull rush him based on size. And when he gets his hands on you, it's tough to get away. And he gets his hands on you pretty fast. He tries to snatch you almost as soon as the play starts so that you can't get away from his wingspan. He had great tape against Isaiah Foskey from Notre Dame, both in season and in the senior bowl, dominated him and made him look tiny and really hurt his draft stock in both settings. Um, and Foskey's 6'5", 260. It's not like we're talking about an undersized guy. And then when you're talking about DeWan Jones, you're talking about a guy who's 6'8", 360, I think people have this image in their head of this slow-moving, lumbering, Andre the Giant-type figure. This is a guy who averaged 17 and 9 as a high school senior. He had offers from D1 teams to go and play college basketball. I'd like to see him try to take down back up five minutes for the Sixers while we're at it. I mean, they could use it. But anyway, he can scoop. You can see it on some plays. And there's there's guys out of, you know, unfamiliar places and unfamiliar frames that have really succeeded over the last couple of years. Guys like Orlando Brown, guys like Jordan Maialata. And I think that those guys have helped his stock as a prospect a lot because being that big and doing the things that those guys have been able to do, you can see Jones do some of the similar things. He's not a total anomaly. So, Dives, let's dive into your number five guy. It's Anton Harrison out of Oklahoma. He's number six on my board. He's down at number 10 on Mark's board. So why don't you lead us off and tell us what you like so much about Harrison? Uh, just to kind of piggyback off of that, like I, I think uh, for Eagles purposes, there's a very real scenario where like they trade back just a little bit and nab one of these guys that we're talking about today. Uh, I would not be upset if they did that kind of move. But Anton Harrison, uh, massive dude at six foot six, three hundred nine pounds, has the speed of a speed, the feet of a smaller player. Man, uh, he has really good burst. Uh, he has really good footwork. Uh, he plays with like a smoothness. He runs with a smoothness in his game, like a basketball player, like a like a tight end would in the NFL, uh, which is really good for like a three hundred plus pounder, man. Um, He's a finesse guy. Uh, he, he has uh, really good feet, like I said. Um, he has really good handwork, and he's really good in pass protection. This is a developmental guy. Uh, that's the first thing you need to know about Anton Harrison. Um, he, he's got really good measurables, but it's, it's going to take a year or two uh, of coaching and seasoning to kind of get the most upside out of this guy. Uh, he's kind of – you've seen – uh, year after year progression and improvement from Harrison uh, at Oklahoma. And he's got a decent amount of snaps, over 1,800 snaps uh, to his name. Uh, so just with a little more development, with a little more kind of play strength, uh, I think uh, Anton Harrison has a ton of upside. Uh, we're going to get to number six here. Uh, number six for Mark is the only guy whose number six is not yet revealed it's cody mock he's number seven for dives he's number eight for me uh, so mark we'll let you lead us off uh, tell us about cody mock yeah cody mock is a guy who i think is going to end up going in the first round in part because of his positional versatility um six six three hundred uh 90.8 pff grade in 2022 88.9 in 2021 uh, allowed only one sack in each of the last two years a uh, deceivingly really good athlete. I, I think if you look at him, you see the mullet, you see North Dakota State on the helmet, you're not going to think that this is some you know next-level athlete, but you can make an argument he could legitimately play any of the five offensive line positions. He entered North Dakota State as a, as a tight end before beefing up about 80 pounds to play left tackle. Uh, he plays with a nasty mean streak you'd expect when you see his toothless smile. Uh, he plays like a hockey goon a little bit out there in terms of on the offensive line. Shorter arms than, than you'd like out of an offensive tackle. Uh, I've seen PFF and others say that he needs work in pass protection with his hands. I think they're kind of projecting because of the D2, uh, because he played in D2. I think there's a chance that that concern's totally unfounded because I didn't think that his hands really looked like they were misplaced or anything like that. I think that they're kind of projecting and saying that could be an issue at the next level, but I don't know what that's based in really. Great in space for screens, uh, excellent pre-snap player, kind of the leader of that offensive line, um, big, big foot truther. So I think that that's, you know, uh, that's where my, my breakdown probably ends. 
Uh, the number eight guy on Mark's board, the only guy who doesn't have number eight revealed yet, is Darnell Wright. He did not make the top ten for dives or I. Uh, so, Mark, why don't you talk to us about Darnell Wright? Yeah, he's 6'6", 335, so obviously you don't have any size or frame concerns. Um, 2022 PFF grade was 71.4. He was a four-year starter, but that really just means he had three years of terrible tape and a lot of pressure allowed on his quarterbacks. Not not good tape for three straight years. And then he kind of put it all together in 2022. He allowed zero sacks and a 1.7% pressure rate third in the country. He was a big prospect coming out of high school. People kind of were calling him a bit of a bust. Tennessee has had a lot of that where they get these big prospects coming out of high school, and they don't really even get to the NFL draft. Well, at least he put it together in his last year there. Some people are saying he might be more of a guard. To me, that doesn't make any sense with his size and frame. That's a tackle, I think, especially with his experience as well. And I, I have to be honest, I'm not all that high on right. I, I think the tape's concerning. I think he's slow moving. I think his feet aren't that great. I think he needs to improve his balance. But there's four things that are keeping me from him dropping like a rock in, in my rankings. One, he's a former top 10 prospect coming out of high school, like I mentioned. He's 6'6", with absolutely zero size concerns. His concerning three years and his encouraging last year all occurred in the rigorous SEC at the highest level outside of the NFL. At least you don't have to worry about quite as much of an adjustment. And then most importantly, he shut Will Anderson down. There it is. He forgot he was on the field. Damn you could argue he did a better job on Will Anderson than any tackle in Anderson's entire career did while he was at Bama. That alone probably got him a spot in my top 10, to be honest. I have a lot of concerns, but if you're able to handle Will Anderson and the, and the height and the speed and everything he throws at you for four quarters and put up, what, 50 points or whatever Tennessee put up on that defense, you know what? You've earned a spot in my top 10, Darnell Wright. Let's roll on to our number nines here. We all have different guys at number nine. So, Dives, I'm going to let you lead us off first with Andrew Voorhees. Why don't you tell us about him? Oh my gosh. I mean, he's been in college forever, six years, <laughs> uh, nearly 3,500 career snaps. Uh, Andrew Voorhees. I, I really like this guy. He's really big. I think six foot six, uh, one of the most experienced players in this class, man. Uh, he has, uh, five years as a full-time starter or, uh, a starter for most of the season. He's only conceded allowed 11 career sacks uh, during his uh, college career, man. Really good grip strength, really good power in his anchor, man. Um, he has, uh, what, he's 320 pounds, but he he's a really good mover. Uh, Weakness-wise, like, he struggles to kind of consistently maintain leverage uh, due to his immense size. But, man, like, uh, this guy is one of the best pass and run blockers uh, in this draft. And I, I think he's a scheme-diverse player as well. Uh, he, you could probably throw him into like any different, any kind of concept and he'd be fine. And he has just a really strong base. Uh, like a lot of these guys, I think this is a plug and play guy from day one. And we were talking before this show, before we went live, I would not be shocked at all to see Voorhees come in and be nearly a pro bowl level talent on the interior for an NFL team sooner than later. All right, uh, Mark, your number nine is Blake Freeland. Uh, why don't you talk to us about him? I think I have a type, guys, so let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, you do. I, I like big, tall offensive tackles, and Blake Freeland is the tallest. He's 6'8", 3'10", 91 on PFF uh, in terms of his grade in 2022, 81.7 in 2021, 81.6 in 2020. He allowed zero sacks in 2020 and in 2022 only allowed one sack in 2021 allowed only seven combined hurries over the last two years he was the nation's second highest graded tackle behind notre dame's joe alt uh shout out to notre dame uh mm -hmm. and then his 90.7 pass blocking grade and 87.9 run blocking grade were third in all of college football he's one of the class's most experienced tackles he's got 2700 career snaps uh, second most among tackles in the draft, high school quarterback and tight end. He also was a high school basketball star who threw down thunderous dunks. There's some pretty good clips on Twitter that you can go and find. A uh, definite backup center option, just like Paris Johnson for the Sixers. Switched from right tackle <laughs> to left tackle halfway through his career. 
Tremendous footwork for a big man. Great hand usage. At his best on the move, a swing tackle for sure. Now the size concerns are, is, are what's dragging him down. If he was probably 30 pounds bigger, maybe 40 pounds bigger, he'd be a top five uh, player on this board for me, I think. Uh, I think that's literally basically all the concerns come down to is him being a little bit lanky him being a little bit long him being a little bit upright. Uh, and, and, you know, hopefully he goes to an NFL team that has him sit for a year and has him add muscle and mass to his frame. Yeah. So the common thread that holds all of Mark's guys together is that none of them could be on an offensive line for Bryce young because he couldn't see over any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have a type. It's why I would not, uh, Kyler Murray would never be my quarterback. I would, cause he just wouldn't, you'd have to drop back 40 yards. Yeah, that's true. All right. So my number nine is, uh, offensive tackle, Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse. No, I didn't pick it just cause I think Bergeron is an awesome last name and fun to say, uh, he started his career at right go or excuse me, right tackle in 2019. And he became the first true freshman to start for Syracuse in almost 20 years. Uh, later, he moved to left tackle in 2020, uh, where he kind of finished out his career there. He is 6'5, 322 pounds, just a little over 23 years old. Uh, he, he's very athletic and smooth. Like that's what I think characterizes his game more than anything is his smoothness, his fluidity. Uh, he's got really good range in the running game. He's got really good technique in the running game. He's just technically sound. Everything about the run game is great, which is good because everything about the pass game is not so great, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, I, I, that's not true. I think he's got good awareness in pass protection. Like he recognizes what's happening and he'll pass off stunts well, but he's got inconsistent hand strikes, both in his placement and his timing. Uh, that causes struggles in pass protection at times. He has a hard time keeping uh, edge rushers on the edge. And I think he lacks functional strength. Now, at the college level, he made up for it with his technique. That's not going to work at the NFL level. He's going to have to add strength. And I always go back and forth with, would you rather have a technically sound but not a strong guy and trust that you can bulk him up? Or would you rather have the physical guy and think you can refine his technique? I think it could go either way. But he's going to have to pack on some strength. And I do wonder if he could, he might could transition to offensive guard at the NFL level as well. He's one of those guys that I think you could kick inside. So I think he's got some versatility. Uh, I really liked what I watched him in the run game. I think it could mitigate some of his pass protection issues if you kicked him inside where he wasn't playing in space as much. And so we'll kick it to our number 10 here. Uh, Dibes and I have the same number 10. We've already talked about Marks, right. uh, but it is Joe Tipman from Wisconsin. Dibes, I'll let you lead us off on Tipman. Oh, I love Joe Tipman, man. Um, this was uh, the guy that took Blake Freeland off my list. Um, I, I think Joe Tipman is one of the biggest sleepers in this draft. Uh, uh, 625 pass blocking snaps the last two years at Wisconsin. He's only allowed one snack and one sack and nine pressures. Uh, he's an athletic freak at six foot six, 317 pounds, super strong. Offensive lineman, man. I think this guy's going to be a household name at the Combine this week. Uh, really quick out of his stance and pass protection. Uh, he sets too high at times, weaknesses-wise. Um, but he's he's an incredibly like rare, tall center uh, that can really play well with leverage and get out and block. I, Joe Tipman, man, is so underrated. Um, I think he, he's the only guy on this list that I don't have a first-round grade on. Uh, but I would not be shocked at all to see him drafted by some team in that back end of round one. I, I think Joe Tipman is being slept on right now. Yeah, so he was a three-star recruit. Uh, he redshirted at Wisconsin, and then he barely played his second year before he took over in 2021 as their center. And he's got a rare build for a center at 6'6". That's, not, that's tackle height, but very strong and athletic in run blocking. Uh, he can do all the blocks. He can... Uh, double team defensive tackles with a guard. He can execute reach blocks. He can uh, snap the ball and pull uh, as a lead blocker on like counter plays, those sorts of things. He does a really good job of that. Like it's Jason Kelsey like. 